Hey gang, it's Jesse. Uh, we're back with another one of these. I know I said I wouldn't make any more because I didn't want people to get the idea that the channel was going to be just me reacting to Game of Thrones. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> I got a reaction and uh, <laughs> down the rabbit hole we go. Let's talk about last night's episode. I have seen a lot of reactions, many of them angry. Um, I knew it was rough when one of the people that I watch it with on a regular basis, who is very into the show, who has had nothing but nice things to say about this season, was like, oh, that was pretty rough. <laughs> so you know, you know it's bad when that starts to happen. I've seen a lot of talk about character motivations not making any sense and things happening for reasons that we're uncertain of. It, it's just an all-around mess. But it's still visually stunning. The game bowl was incredible looking. It was like you're, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a Dark Souls boss. There's a dragon overhead and you're fighting on stage. It was so cool. The crumbling castle, all of that was amazing looking. The acting, still incredible. The music, still incredible. It's really, really put together very well. But there's just something about the storytelling that is a little off. And I think a lot of us are just confused now about why characters are doing the things they do, right? It, it seems their reasoning's fuzzy or just sometimes non-existent. And I've seen a lot of people fall back to the whole, it's lazy writing. I don't know that I buy that. I think the writing's not lazy. I think it's just uncreative. And I'm going to try and explain what I mean in this video. But um, everything that's happened in this show has happened for a reason. It's all been choreographed from Arya two episodes ago to Daenerys now. It's all been there from the beginning. You can see how we got to this point. Uh, let's take Daenerys' heel turn, for example, right? All of that was something that's been bubbling under the surface for a while. It's been there since the beginning. And I think a lot of us sort of knew Daenerys was a bad egg. Ooh, that's a rough joke. Knew Daenerys was a bad egg. Um, way back when, when she was running around screaming like, where are my dragons? Like there's there's something about her that you're like, I don't know. She's the one who's going to win. Like as much as we wanted her to break the wheel and reset everything and stop all the BS over in Westeros, there was something about her as a character that was wrong or off. And, and it was always there. Daenerys' character, like I said, is incredibly flawed and damaged from the beginning. The only thing keeping her together are the good people who flock around her. Her good deeds outweigh the bad because she was counseled against rash action. In fact, much of her actual time as ruler was either filled with correcting costly mistakes or simply not being on the throne at the time and it being run in her absence. But people still flocked to her anyway. She had a name, she had dragons, she had love, all giving her power. Jorah. Barristan, Tyrion, Varys, etc. All knew she had the greatest potential to bring change to the world. What kind of change? That was the gamble. But at the end of the day, she was still, much like every other character, destined to do a thing, obsessed with her destiny and what was hers. She wanted that revenge. She wanted the crown. She wanted the throne. If she loses all of this stuff that's going to help her get her destiny, what is the point of her life? If she doesn't have that destiny anymore, if she's not going to be the queen... If it all falls away, she's going to do whatever it takes to hold on to that. It it defines her as a being, even if it means burning down a whole city. This is why characters written with this kind of destiny storyline usually end up being the villain. So why then, when you can see this coming, when it seems so obvious looking back, did all of this suck? Why were so many people let down by everything happening from Danny's choices to Cersei being killed by rocks to Varys dying to... I'm really still upset about Varys. We'll never know what the hell was spoken to him in the flames or who that voice was. It's going to drive me crazy. It's all really upsetting. And if you'll give me this, I want to go on like a little tangent with you. Come deep dive with me for a minute. So in writing, there are two types of writers. There are writers who plot everything meticulously. They think about everything. They plan every moment. They have it all set up. They know what every character is going to do, when they're going to do it, all that stuff. They are very, very good at giving you those amazing moments, ending stories very well, having characters do really cool things, really like selling the big parts of their stories. The problem is a lot of the times those characters can be sort of stiff or, um, 
it can lead to characters being more like plot devices than actual people. If that makes sense. One of the better examples of this right now on TV, uh, it's on Netflix, is The Dragon Prince. The Dragon Prince is a really fun show. You can tell it's created by people who are like this. Uh, go watch seasons one and two, then go back and watch the beginning of season one, and you'll be like... Because they've plotted so much and planned so much, little details here and there will just blow your mind. And I think it's amazing, and they're doing a really good job with it. But that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is sort of creating a backbone, and then filling it out as you go along. And what this does is this sort of creates a fun way of meeting characters, learning about characters, having the characters feel real, they grow, they change, good guys can become bad guys, bad guys can become good guys, and it gives you sort of like real great character studies because the writer is sort of growing with the characters. The problem, of course, is that it can sort of go off the go you know like go off the rails you can get things that don't really go anywhere you can have stories that you think will be important but maybe the character changes in a way and then you see their mistakes then you have to go back and redraft and change stuff and fill out things and it just takes a long time to write a book spoiler that's how george rr R. martin writes he writes that way he has a backbone story, and then he just sort of fills it out as he goes along, redrafts, goes back, and looks. I think one time he said that it was like planting seeds in a garden, or tending to a garden, I think is what he said. His characters are like the things in his garden, and so he plants the seed of the character, he watches the character grow, he tends to the character, and whatever the character does... That's just what happens. And so he sees what the characters want. He looks for the realism in the characters, which is why the characters are so great, which is why those characters in the books in the first five seasons, you're like, wow, I am i don't want anything bad to happen to this person, or I really want something bad to happen to that person. You have all these moments that really define these characters, but at the same time, you can see along the way how each choice they've made has led them to a moment. It's this sense of realism that... None of the characters understand who the hero of the book is or who is a fan favorite or who has plot armor. They just live their lives based on what a rational person would think or in some cases irrational and they try to survive to the next step. And if they if they do something that is against their own self-interest, many of the times they're punished for it. Uh, like Ned, he tried to do the right thing for the kingdom and was killed. So here's the problem with the TV show, and I think we all subconsciously knew this was a problem and just kind of ignored it. When season five ended, when John's laying there in the snow, bleeding out, a lot of us thought, okay, what the hell do we do now? Because there are no books. We don't know what comes next. Everything after this is new. What the hell is going to happen? Well, turns out at the time, D&D told everyone that George R.R. R. Martin had told them how the show would end. They had all the building blocks they needed to end the show. What they got, much like the way George writes, is the backbone. The things that needed to happen to get us to the end. Everything else was kind of like, go nuts. So this stuff that's happening is 100% what George told them would happen. It's how the books end. Danny will be bad, and what happens in the next episode is in the books too. The problem is, unlike George, they don't have the luxury of meandering through a story, creating stuff as they go along, exploring characters, and what they want to do, and their motivations. Season 6 does have some moments where they definitely tried to do that. But... At the end of the season, they gave themselves this fixed endpoint, a way to force themselves to wrap up the plot and complete the story. They said, look, we're going to do 13 episodes. I seem to recall they actually said, we're going to do 13 episodes. The problem is, from that point on, it wasn't about the characters anymore. Everyone and everything in Game of Thrones was forced to become a plot device in order to get us to that last episode. It's almost like once they knew the ending, they had to reverse engineer everything back for 13 episodes and give us all the main points, all the things we needed to see, and then sort of fill in the little spots along the way. It's why character development seemed to have stopped in season 7. It's why 8 is filled with things that we all saw coming, but... When we finally see them, they're done with such haste and with no real on-screen motivation that it's just jarring. The best way to sum up last night was 
unsatisfying. Something about it just felt wrong and unearned. The Night King defeated in one episode. Danny turns evil in two episodes. John becomes Ned in three. It doesn't feel right because the nature of the story has changed. The characters we fell in love with are not the ones on the screen right now. And thus, we're not getting the endings those characters we love deserve. Is HBO to blame? Is it D&D? Does Martin get some anger for having given this to them? Who knows? I, at this point, only know that I'm just let down. And I, like you, am disappointed. It reminds me of exactly how I felt when Lost was ending. I loved that show. I excused a lot of stuff. But when the writers said that they had an endpoint and promised an ending, we got one, but it wasn't the one anyone wanted. That's why we're at the point where we have an episode where the scorpions can kill a dragon with incredible accuracy, but the next episode, Danny is invincible over King's Landing. It's why we can't believe Cersei, who never quits and always plots a revenge, is suddenly crying about not wanting to die? It's why Euron shows up at the exact spot Jamie is at, and they have to have a fight for some stupid reason that's totally not what anyone cares about at all. It's why Brienne and Jamie getting together only for him to leave doesn't have an impact. It's why the Battle of Winterfell felt wrong. All of this and more, it's just stuff that happened, but did so with timing that made the actions make no sense. It's why this episode was just bad. And it's why you see the majority of the fan base upset. What upsets me the most is almost being positive that this happened, seeing it as clear as day, and d d giving us two episodes at the beginning of the season that seem like complete wastes of time in hindsight. Why did Brienne really need to be a knight for this story? Like, it was a great moment for the fans. I loved that moment. But looking back, what was important about it? Why did we really need to have Arya have sex with Gendry? I could go on, but like, think about this stuff. It's weird, in hindsight, choices that were made at the very end. I, I guess what I'm saying is, this all sucks. Like, I love Game of Thrones. I, I want to love Game of Thrones. And I feel like everything that's happened this season, maybe, just maybe, fingers crossed, I don't know that it will save the season, but if everything's leading towards the end, maybe the ending, this last episode, will be something special. Maybe that will be at least a great way to, to end the show. Maybe not the season, but maybe the show, and it'll be like a, a period, like a fine point. But this is the part of every time I do a rant where I have to be like, I wonder what's going to happen. And let me tell you, my thoughts of what's going to happen do not make a good ending. I am convinced that John is going to go and try to stop Daenerys. And Daenerys is going to like, Dracarys, this dude. And then John's just going to sit there and take the fire because, you know, he's a Targaryen. And then he's going to go and try and kill Daenerys. Something about his honor will stop him, or maybe he will. Maybe he'll kill her in the fire and it'll be like a cool prophecy moment. Who knows? But whatever happens, John will go north of the wall at the end. He'll just be like, I'm out. I don't want to be anywhere near this kingdom. All of you are terrible. I'm going to go with the only people who understand me. I want to be free. And I feel like that's probably going to happen. And I feel like John's going to go north of the wall. And can I tell you what I'm really worried about? This show has become very cyclical, right? Daenerys kept talking about breaking the wheel, how she wanted to break the wheel and all stuff, but she just became part of it. She literally continued what the Mad King wanted to do. And John basically became Ned and started doing really stupid stuff for loyalty and honor. All these things about these characters, they all changed and became sort of the tropes of what ruined the kingdom in the beginning. And can I tell you something? Something about... Brand's storyline seems a little unfinished, and I wonder if because Bran is still alive, the White Walkers are still alive. I know, I know, I don't think we're going to see them again, but like, what if at the end, John goes north to find Tormund, and he finds him, but it's like his head in one of those weird swirly patterns, and he's like, oh no, and then it ends. If that's how this show ends... I'm going to like, I don't know, guys, I don't know. I don't know what I'll, I don't know what I'd do. I would be both upset and kind of happy that like we get a redo in the future. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I guess we'll all find out what the hell's going on. And if any of this was worth it in six days. So, uh, 
Hang in there, gang. It's going to be wild. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots. We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Not a lot of video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, thank God. I don't need pants now. Hey, JC. What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a professional broadcast. Yeah, now sing music. It's a professional broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots. It's a professional broadcast. Now here's to ask and answer one simple question. It's a professional broadcast. You got-